G'day guys, how you doing? And uh, I can't believe it, I finally have a clear night. It has been so long since I've been able to do some astrophotography. And uh, although the moon is gonna be rising in the next couple of hours, I don't care one little bit. Here in uh, South Australia, it has been probably one of the wettest seasons that I can recall. I mean, after tonight, it's meant to be um, raining for the next two weeks. Uh, how much of that next two weeks forecast is going to be rain? I don't know. But uh, yeah, I can't believe it. We've finally got a clear night so I can make one of these videos and share, share with these guys the twins and doing some astrophotography. Well, I've been having a little bit of a dilemma on which image or which target to image. And although we're currently under a, a lockdown, which will be lifted in the next day, um, I can't go traveling anywhere and although the moon is rising anyway I don't really want to go traveling anywhere for some dark skies because it's going to be ruined anyway by the moon so what I'm thinking about doing is going back to that first image that first capture that got me really hooked on astrophotography about five six years ago and that is the Triford Nebula and the Lagoon Nebula now I'm going to try and frame the Triford and the Lagoon together in the same frame. Um, it's going to be pretty tight with the field of view I've got with the, the Rasa 8 and the ASI uh, 294 camera. But it's achievable. And the cool thing too is I'm going to be capturing some of it in mono as well. So I'm very excited to go back to those days of when I first took that very, 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 so I'm getting excited, that very first image. Um, of the Triford Nebula and back then it was with the Celestron Nexstar 6 SE it was a 30 second exposure with the Nikon D5100 I think it was and uh, and just seeing that Triford on on the back I was uh, that that the red and the blue just intertwined with each other um, wow I, I yeah that's what I love about astrophotography. Um, so I'd love to hear in the comments what your first target was that you got abs that made you get absolutely hooked on astrophotography and all of a sudden it sent your bank account absolutely empty. Because we all know when you get that bug, that bank account may start off healthy, but it ends up in the red very, very quick. Because this stuff sometimes is not expensive. I mean, <laughs> it is expensive, sorry. I'm getting excited, you see, first clear night. And it's a belter too, because it's very still. Absolutely still, no wind at all. Although it is forecast for wind, um, early hours of the morning, but fingers crossed, um, we pack up a little bit by then, or it goes a little bit later on in the morning, we'll see, anyway. Um, I'm rambling, so I'm gonna start setting up, get this polar aligned, and get imaging. All right, so we're all polar aligned and ready to start imaging. Now, I'm going to be imaging, as I said before, the Lagoon and Triford Nebula, because the Triford was the very first image I ever captured. And, uh, and to have these two combined together, um, I think just makes for an awesome image. Now, Rasa 1 is gonna be shooting monochrome, so MM with a um, astronomic 6NM F Max FR filter. And that's going to be shooting about 120 second uh, exposures. Now RASA 2 is going to be using the um, uh, RGB, so the uh, ZWASI 294 MC Pro uh, camera, and that's using an astronomic L1 UV IR cut filter. Um, I'm going to be shooting 30 second exposures, both at a gain of uh, 120. And, uh, and the reason I'm shooting uh, uh, 30 second exposures for the, the color is purely because I'm in a, a Bordel, um, uh, Bordel 6, 5 to 6 zone, so I don't really want it to be washed out too much. 
um, the MM, the 294MM with the hydrogen alpha filter is going to be uh, cutting out a lot of that um, glow and pick up a, hopefully a lot of beautiful nebula. Now the moon is starting to rise so that's going to brighten up our sky a bit too but absolutely who cares I am out imaging finally and I cannot wait to see the results. So I think it's about time we start imaging. Well guys, um, it's been an interesting night. I have had a few teething issues and I still feel like I'm getting used to Nina. Um, I still love the program, I still love that uh, synchronized dithering um, between the two cameras and, and all those sort of functions. Um, but I did download and update my PhD software and now I've got Multistar um, guiding. So I had to recalibrate um, for the meridian flip in the guiding because I ended up doing a bit of a, a runaway in deck. So um, yeah, I had to spend a little bit of time doing that and getting that all set up and then restart the uh, the imaging session. So I have lost a few frames, um, but honestly, I could not really care less because I have not been able to do any sort of astro imaging in quite some time just because the weather has been absolutely horrendous. And you may have seen my video when I went on a little bit of a, a workshop scouting trip um, up north and that's really been the only time I've been able to get away and, and sort of do something and I couldn't take my telescopes with me because even then I wasn't sure I was going to get clear skies um, but the clouds are starting to come in now it's still beautiful um, conditions and I wish I could just keep imaging throughout the rest of the night but I don't want to risk it because in the morning it is forecast for rain so if I fall asleep don't get up this system here could get washed out and I do not want that at all. The other issue I've, I've had is the power um, consumption side of things. Now, my, old, my battery pack is old, like I'm talking six years old. And the battery cells in them are definitely not holding charge like they used to. So this is meant to be an 80 amp hour um, thumper battery pack system. And it's, it's not, um, I'm not getting those 80 amp hours anymore so I'm thinking about moving to a lithium system um, in the future to power all of this but there's also other things that uh, I'm wanting to do in the future too um, so I've got to take that into uh, consideration as well and I can't really talk too much on that because I still don't know if it's going to end up coming true um, who knows but it will enable me to travel further up north um, for clear skies pretty much any time of the year but again I, I don't know if that's going to end up happening but fingers crossed it does um yeah so i'm going to put all these images together i'm not going to add any calibration frames because i've got to redo the um calibration data so the darks um uh, flat darks flats and and all that especially with the uh, the mono camera so um 
yeah i've got to do all that so the purpose of this video to get up and get it to these guys as soon as i can i might skip the calibration data and just load up these images stack them um, process them remove some of that um light fall off in pix insight and uh, see what sort of image we come up with anyway i'm gonna call it a night so uh yeah i hope you guys have enjoyed this video I hope you guys have enjoyed seeing me back out there imaging the stars again and I cannot wait for some warmer weather to come back. Even though it's not cold, I cannot wait for the, this warm weather so that way we get some clear skies again here in, uh, in Australia. And uh, my thoughts to everyone in uh, Melbourne who's having really bad weather, as well as uh, coronavirus lockdowns, and Sydney as well. Um, these guys have been in lockdown for quite some time now. And uh, I hope this video brings you some sort of joy all right guys well yeah that's it for me so uh until next time take it easy oh don't forget to subscribe if you're new see you